Hi guys and welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 468, featuring a look at the game Ravenloft Strahd's Possession. <laughs> no, you, you guys have been asking me to do this game forever, so, so here it is. Uh, now this is a game that came out in 94, uh, at least if Gog is to be, uh, be believed, somewhere right around uh, either the very earliest part of 94 or the last part of 93, uh, depending on where you look. Uh, but it definitely came out before Menzo Baranzan, which is the game we covered in the previous episode. So try, try not to get too confused chronologically. Uh, it does use the same engine uh, with a few differences that, that we'll get into in the video. And it is, of course, uh, set in the Ravenloft campaign setting. Now, if you're not familiar with this, we'll get into it a little bit. Uh, but it's a very intriguing setting, particularly if you like vampires and sort of classical uh, horror stuff, Bram Stoker. Uh, Anne Rice and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, I guess you could compare it to something like Vampire the Masquerade, but, you know, it's quite a bit different than that. Uh, you know, I just happen to have the Realm of Terror box set here from the, my tabletop days, and it's always fun to go through these and just look at the uh, the gorgeous artwork, you know, and read all the fun manuals and things. You know, I always kind of had a, I think, tabletop envy, <laughs> you know, as a computer gamer, <laughs> you know, especially nowadays. I mean, uh, even today, if you go and buy a you know, a tabletop uh, role-playing game. You get all this wonderful artwork, fun stuff to look at, all this stuff. <laughs> you know, in the computer games, you know, it's quite often just a digital download. And you kind of feel like you're missing out on some of that uh, uh, artwork, you know. And the, I mean, I'm sorry, the digital stuff isn't always where it's at, uh, at least for me. Uh, but anyway, we'll get uh, into the game, the computer game, uh, which probably has a lovely box. I wish I could get a hold of one. Uh, it's $100. <laughs> on eBay though so for now I'll have to settle for the digital assets uh, on goodoldgames.com uh, anyway we've got a lot to cover here so without further ado here is Ravenloft Strahd's Possession alright folks here we go a little game called apparently Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> Ravenloft is that, actually, is that actually the title? no it's Ravenloft Strahd's Possession. Cordial greetings from Count Strahd Van Zorovich, Lord of Barovia. So if you're not familiar, familiar with what Ravenloft is, I've been reading a little bit about it. I'll show you what I've been reading. Uh, over at Wikipedia, it's actually kind of interesting history. So some of my favorite authors are actually involved in this. Uh, Tracy Hickman and Laura Hickman. Uh, they do fantastic novels, if you haven't read those. Uh, Hickman and uh, Margaret Weiss uh, did my probably my favorite fantasy novel. You know, okay, you got Tolkien, but, <laughs> you know, just in terms of just fun reading uh, their Dragonlance series. It's just phenomenal. But anyway, uh, they apparently were playing some Dungeons and Dragons. This is Tracy and Laura Hickman, who I believe are husband and wife. Yeah, husband and wife. Uh, and they just sort of had a vampire in a dungeon somewhere. I was like, well, how'd this vampire get there? What the hell's up with this? It doesn't make sense. You know, what's, what's the story here? There is no story. It's just kind of a random monster. So they kind of got bugged them for whatever reason. So they set about trying to create a more plausible scenario as to how that vampire ended up in a dungeon. In a, bringing together that uh, Dracula, uh, you know, Bela Lugosi type stuff with... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons classic fantasy. Uh, how do you create a series around that, create a campaign around that? And that basically became Ravenloft. So some pretty good talent, writing talent behind the uh, the world. Uh, and this series came out in 19, yeah, January 1st, 1994, it says there. And I was trying to figure out, did this come before the Menzo Baranzan game I did uh, in the last video? And it Kind of find out this was the first one. So they did this one, uh, Ravenloft Strat's Possession, then they took what they knew, learned from that and used the same engine and recycled it for uh, Menzo Baranzan. But there is some stuff that's unique to this game where they tried to uh, bring in the uh, Ravenloft mythos, uh, if you will. Uh, anyway, it's let's see how much is it. $9.99 on GOG, GOG.com, and that comes, it's not just the game we'll be playing today but it also includes the sequel Stone Prophet so I might get into this game at some point but uh, today we will be just looking at uh, Strahd's Possession 
And you always hear, if you talk to Ravenloft players, they're, they're crazy about this vampire. <laughs> I, hope I'm, I hope I'm even saying his name right. Strad or Strad, I guess we'll see. Because we will be playing the CD-ROM version. Oh my god, it's got voice acting in it. It is just cutting edge. Can you believe that digitized audio? <laughs> Maybe even have some uh, 3D animation. We'll see. Now, if you get it from GOG, you will want to check out the manuals. And it also comes with the uh, the clue book. Now, unfortunately, and I don't know why they did this. I'm really kind of, kind of uh, <laughs> a little bit pissed off about it, actually. Where the hell's the cover? You know, they, they, they didn't scan in the cover, and that's a real shame, because it's some pretty, I'm pretty sure it had some, uh, the same artwork from the box that I could show you. But it's, it's not on here. I don't know what somebody sleep at the, <laughs> sleep at the scanner. I don't know. <laughs> but they did not put the cover on that. Wow. Uh, but everything else is here. Um, I wonder why there's three pictures of, uh, of him there. <laughs> Triple good. <laughs> uh, but as always, you wonder, I don't, I don't want to beat this dead horse at this point but man if you aren't reading the manuals you are just missing out on a bunch of stuff i mean all these uh cool quotes in here uh sorry about the noise in the background let me just fix that quick oh geez sorry about that for some reason you know i love recording here in the, in the mat cave but uh, there's a well pump back there that clicks on whenever the water hose is activated and it's just like deafening that's why i have to uh <laughs> work around that. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of not having a real studio. You know, you're always dealing with like sounds and neighbors mowing the grass or whatever the case may be. You know, maybe one day, maybe if you guys all chip in your buck a show, I could just buy a dedicated little building to record these in, then we won't have any <laughs> interruptions. <laughs> um, anyway, man, let me get back into what I was saying. Uh, so the manuals, they have all kinds of cool quotes. And a little bit of story background, and there's this one has a a uh, somewhere back here. Yeah, the shadow. He looks pretty badass, doesn't he? I hope we run into him. I think there's a where yeah where rat, <laughs> an evil rat like being. So, <laughs> oh, I hope I run into one of those. Hmm. Okay, I totally lost my train of thought though. Oh. Uh, there's designer notes in here by Chris Straka. Straka, Straka, Strad, Strad. I'm not doing too well with the names to dig. Uh, I don't even know what this is. But I, I have gotten... I found him on Facebook, you know, and sometimes they respond to you, sometimes they don't. We'll see if Chris will uh, respond to me. But I, I just would... God, I'd love to talk to this guy. Get him on and do a, you know, a full, proper, uh, you know, three-hour-long bat chat. I don't know if he's got the patience for anything like that, but man, that would be super cool. Uh, super cool, because uh, he's running this Dreamforge Entertainment, uh, who did Menzo Brands and a bunch of other games too. And you could tell just from reading these designer notes here in the manual that he's he's a guy that's, you know, I agree with everything he says in here. I mean, it's just a hundred percent spot on. And he talks about you know you have to have a vision to make a game. You got to pay attention to the criticism you're getting from uh, reviewers and fans and I guess beta testers. He talks in here somewhere about what makes a game fun. Yeah, you know I can't that that I can't quit playing. Can't wait to play again. I think I'm addicted. Please, honey, not now. Got to finish it. Type of feeling. I mean, <laughs> uh, there's very few games that achieve that level. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else in here worth? Uh, Repeating, he just talks in here about the seamless interface. So he says he put a lot of time and effort into making sure the interface is intuitive and seamless. So I'm pretty sure it's the same one for Menzel Baranson. So I'd have to say they, he, he kind of came about 50% <laughs> towards that goal. I don't know. Maybe for the time. Uh, you know, this could have been a leap forward. I, I don't know. Um, personally, I thought the original Dungeon Master game was pretty... Uh, Pretty seamless. You didn't have that business with the having to click on the uh, the attacks of each player dealing with that rune system, but uh, it was uh, fairly immersive. I would I would say. And then somewhere in here he talks about yeah this making it more like a role playing with these NPCs. So he tried hard to balance the story with NPCs, book scrolls, and sub uh, subquests, but still leaving it up to you, the player. 
to decide how you want to proceed through that through the game creating your own story as it were at least getting to choose your, your paths so I'll be looking to see how well he did with that uh, and then uh, somewhere else yeah the puzzles <clears throat> so he says that he uh, tried to strike a balance between you know just putting just enough puzzles in there I guess to kind of make uh, make it a little bit more uh, varied a little more variety how do you win the blessing of two elven maidens turned to stone <laughs> you know, that's a question I've been trying to solve for decades. Uh, maybe we'll finally figure that out. How do you... Oh, I opted for more story-oriented puzzles. That's what I was looking for. So that, to me, is the goal of a game that's going to... If you're going to have puzzles, you know, make it part of the story. And again, I'm always pointing to that Betrayal of Crondor game, but, you know, they just nailed it there. We'll see how well uh, this Ravenloft game does. And then this is uh, the clue book here, and we're going to probably be referring to this throughout because this is supposed to be a very difficult game, especially at the beginning. And if we scroll down here, well, it talks about the NPCs you can recruit, and then it has these uh, handy-dandy maps. Now there is an auto map built in, but you probably want to refer to this as well just to see like where you're supposed to go next. Remember, folks, this is, there's no waypoints, there's no checkpoints, there's no quest journal, <laughs> nothing like that. You're supposed to actually write stuff down, pay careful attention to the dialogues, and then uh, buy a clue book. <laughs> so you can see, like, oh, there's where I'm supposed to be in one. Then you can check back here and see, did I do that? Yes. I can move on to the next area. Or some people like to play it this way. They just play until they get stuck. And when they get good and stuck, then they step out and look at a and a walkthrough. <clears throat> okay, anyway, that's enough of this setup. I want to get into the game, and it does have a fairly lengthy cutscene, so I'll play this, try to make the volume. <laughs> the level's okay, <laughs> so it's not deafening, but just to be warned, it might burst. Okay, Ravenloft, Strand's possession, do I dare? Having recently returned from patrol, the comrades of Lord Belt locked the corridors of High Hall, approaching the quarters of Elturel's sovereign man. Word of the unforgivable is in the land. Forces without virtue, it is whispered. Forces both powerful and corrupt plot against the world. In the rush of explosive magic, the door of the gun shall be torn aside. It is too late. With each stride toward the door, it is the place of the realization of failure. Amid the debris lie dealt in the mage Baranta Chancellor, still alive. Yet both mauled by the philosophy of the attack. Man, great artwork on this. Thank the gods you're here with us. By hell, if only a moment sooner. The assassin who sought our lives has failed, but in his hand lies the holy symbol of hell. The amulet torn from me as we fought. The cutthroat moves quickly toward the forest beyond the castle. Stop him and retrieve the amulet. Go now! A bow to hell is sworn in Delt's presence. Never shall the Lord of Elturel see his comrade again until the amulet is safely in their hands. The amulet of Yindor! At the gate, an order to raise the portcullis is given. It ascends all to the portcullis. Those whose blood seeds with anger over their soul. If I ever get rich, I'm gonna have a house with a portcullis. Just letting you know that. There we go. Dreamforge Entertainment. We can't spell entertainment, but we can do 3D graphics. <laughs> a lot of great programmers can't spell. I always thought that was so weird. Like to be that, you know, precise with coding and proofreading that, but when it comes to spelling, not so much. Wow, the music is kind of creepy. I love like it. There's that artwork. See, this is what was on the cover of that manual. Uh, really nice. 
guys. A little title music there. It's a little bit loud, though. All right. Uh, so I think we need to, uh, yeah, create some characters. Holy. I don't get your attention. What? <laughs> I can totally uh, the, uh, What? What? Oh, you know, I think they're trying to work in that theme of the, uh, the manual talked about these, uh, traveler type race of people, culture, it's like Vrodno, Vordons, not familiar with enough with the lore to tell you off the top of my head, but I think they're trying to blend in with this. At first I thought it was Ultima, was it Ultima 4 where they, where they do this, uh, fortune teller shtick? Let's see, foresee this character. What in the hell? Select sex. Yes. Yes. Oh. Male. <laughs> Select race. Oh. This is cool. Look at the look at these cards. Human. Kind of a Da Vinci looking thing there. Half elf. It's like tree man. <laughs> Halfling, just a little mug of ale. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go with the... Uh... I guess I'll go... I, you know, my friend uh, said I should do a paladin for sure. Which sounds like, like a pretty good idea since there's still be so many vampires. So I might... I usually go dwarf, but I think we'll go human. Because I want to make sure I can make him a paladin. Yeah. Select alignment. Awful good. Select face. <laughs> this does not look like a paladin to me. None of these look very paladin. This guy looks like he's had. He's <laughs> quite happy. This guy looks more like a tavern keeper. Ah, is that the only faces? Somewhat limited selection. Okay, well, let's go. Uh, this guy kind of looks like an elf to me, though. Uh, I just go with I'll go with this happy guy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't look very paladin. Maybe, maybe that's like his evening wear, his casual wear. You know. <clears throat> when I'm done adventuring, I like to adventure in the pub. Click on attribute card to accept. So, you know, I was expecting something like Benzo Baranza with all that fancy sort of 3D graphics, but it's just <coughs> a fairly uh, standard system here. Let's see, reroll. How does this... Oh, crap! Oh, I can't have a Paladin with a strength of 13. You kidding me? Okay, let's go through that again. <laughs> Mel. Human. Pally. I'm happy guy. Okay, so I thought I could click on this and like tweak, tweak the rolls, but it doesn't look like I'll be able to do that. I've got to kill the blime on this. As much as I like this music, it is really loud. Okay. <clears throat> Strength of 16, Charisma, I think the Paladins actually do need Charisma, so this is a pretty decent character. I'll just keep him. Oh, Edit. What does that do? Edit Attributes. Okay. <laughs> It'll let me cheat. Well, I'm going to that case just to cheat away. Probably want to do 16 there. That's a pretty impressive character. Done. Review face. Yes. Keep him. And this will be our good old buddy, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to find somebody to be number two. Let's go to the Matt chat page and I'll pull a name out. Um, okay, so I took the last few. Matt Chat patrons, retrons, and I came up with uh, Mike and Leonardo. So I guess I could uh, flip a coin here to pick which one of those. Maybe I'll just go with Leonardo. That's kind of a 
That's a fun name you don't see every day. No offense to Mike. Mike, you're like me. You know, Matt and Mike, everybody's named Mike or Matt. <laughs> but Leonardo, he's unusual. You know, Leonardo sounds kind of like a gnome to me. But I kind of want a halfling in the party. I don't even know why. Let's see, cleric, fighter, thief. You want to make him a cleric? No problem. It's probably a pretty good choice again. If we're going to be dealing with lots of undead, I think being able to uh, turn the undead would be a good. Let's make him chaotic good. Oh, I'm just so good. Ah! It's like the. Who's that? I feel good. You know that guy. <laughs> that's chaotic good. <laughs> um, that, that's a good look. I like this. Love that mustache. He's like the gardener guy. Paul uh, James. Okay, this guy's gonna need good wisdom. You know what? The heck with that rolling. I'm just gonna. If they're gonna provide me with this editing tool. Uh, well, I guess halflings can only be 17, 17 wise. <laughs> I think with that mustache, he's at least 15. On the charisma. Go ahead and bump the strength up a little bit. He's like a big old muscular halfling. Done. Cool. Keep him. Let's keep him. Now, I don't know if Leo... Or if Leonardo goes by Leo, or we got to go with the full Leonardo. Leon. Leonardo. I mean, there's lots you can do with that name. Nard. <laughs> Just gonna look. It'll let me type in the full name, though, so I'll go with that. Watch the future. What am I getting into? I feel like I'm at a seance. Or... <clears throat> There's gonna be crystals and candles. We're close on him. I feel it in my bones. He's gone headlong south, fleeing like a fox from a flood. We'll take him soon if we stay on his heels. South then, for Lord Delt and for justice. For Lord Delt and for justice. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, okay. Now let's see if I can just pick this up from my Menzo Baranzan experience or are we going to have to uh, relearn things. Stepping mode on. No. Where's... Looking for the, the menu. The main menu. Oh my god. <laughs> Already flummoxed. Are you kidding me? Oh, here we go. Oh. So in this game, you just go up to the top and then you can see. Now let's go ahead and save it. Just in case we meet with a sudden death. Okay, we click there to get their inventory. Man, I'm going to have to lower this volume again. This is like... For whatever reason, that is super freaking loud. Okay. <clears throat> what the heck is that? Ivory scroll case. Oh, he's got a scroll case, does he? Okay, remember that? <clears throat> so in this, if you want to open up a case or a bag or something, you have to click it, and then click on his hand, and then click on the hand again to move it back there. He's got cure serious wounds. What is that? Is his ACs? Nine? Levels? He's already level six? What? And I guess this game starts you off pretty advanced. <clears throat> you know, I don't usually like that. I usually like to start at level one so I can know exactly what has gone into my character. Okay, he's got a sling there. And I, I'm not going to bother with the <coughs> ranged weapons because if it's anything like Menzo Baranzan, it's just not going to be worth the, uh, the effort. I've got an empty bag. I'm going to go ahead and just put these scrolls in there. <laughs> Woo! Hours of playing and joy. Okay, how do I get out of the screen? Right click. Okay, so it looks like a kind of betrayal of Crondor level of graphics. And then to move around and just hold the left button and then I moved it around the screen. Bada boom, bada bing. And then I think I can also use the... Uh, Number pad. Yeah. 
easy enough strafing <clears throat> and then there's a step mode evil step mode so that would make it play just like a, you know grid based movement system I kind of feel like you know you probably want to just do the the mouse is probably the way they want you to control it right. do you hear that <laughs> am I hearing things or did I think I just laugh Oh, this is menacing. Whoa! Okay, I think I could just click on him to attack. Assassin. Guess we got him. <laughs> like some kind of weird star fruit or something in the face. <clears throat> Such foul artifacts. Would that I could summon oblivion itself to devour them. But no, not these. We're obliged to carry them along. What are we talking about? Artifacts. Believe it. What I can sense tells me this. They embrace secrets to the plot against Delt. You know what they say about those who smelt it. Uh, they hold the truth of it in their vulgar auras. They hold the truth of it in their vulgar, vulgar auras. Take them along for now and let the priests of Helm deal with their evil at the proper time. This other is Delt's amulet. Gather it as well. There he is. So apparently we got some amulets. You pick up Withered Heart of Mortal Ardor. Okay. <laughs> Want to pick that up? <laughs> I guess that's what they were talking about. Wicked artifacts. Okay, got an assassin assassin's Parchment. Let's see, how do I read the parchment? <clears throat> I thought they might do a little voice a voiceover, guess not. That means I could do it. I am beset by madness, perhaps insane. Oh, I know that feeling well. I commit these few words to paper that others might better judge my fate. Born to this land, my life's yearning focused on but one event, to escape Ravenloft. <laughs> so they're trying to get out of the game that I'm trying to get into. This I accomplished, how I managed it, what secrets I acquired, and what I stole from an undead lich. Is un <coughs> an undead lich as opposed to a, uh, a living lich, I guess. Know this, that in... Delving into arcane lore and ancient manuscripts, I came upon knowledge of the one article which might destroy Strad. Further, in the land beyond Ravenloft, I may have found it through deceitful and tortuous sources, many of which I only half believe. I have come to the conclusion that a charm worn by the Lord Delt of Earl to rule is the holy symbol of Raven. What is my madness? That after escaping Ravenloft, my heart tells me I must steal Delt's amulet, even if it means the death of that good lord. And with a charm I only half believe might be Strad's doom, I must return to Ravenloft. Only I, it seems, might free my people from their eternal fate. Hmm. I like it. So the guy we assume was the Oh, just a villain, an assassin. You know, we can sort of uh, sympathize with with his point of view. Cool. Looks like we got one more item there. By Helm, we're losing the light. Look there. A fog rolls in as though it would devour us. Ah, the mist creeps on as if to foretell our doom. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! That's a fog. What in the... By helm! <laughs> Let's go. Did I... How about it actually drop that item? Do you sense it? Look about. This is not where we stood a moment ago. It seems most unnatural. Lord Delt's amulets and those foul objects we found on the assassin are gone. 
gone. They've vanished. Don't you see? They've been stolen from us. We get it. <laughs> we get it, Matt. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what if this happened? I'm going to go ahead and save it again. So apparently... <clears throat> we have... Teleported. And I suspect we have teleported to Ravenloft. <laughs> you know, it's pretty, you know, I think this game looks a little better than Menzo Baranzen already. I mean, <laughs> looks a little, I mean, it's still muddy as hell, but, you know, the tree doesn't look too bad. You know, you get pretty close up to it before it starts looking up. Uh, Looking pixelated, but of course this is still uh, pretty early days for 3D technology. Whoa! What the hell is that thing? Oh, a warg! Oh my God! <laughs> Are you kidding? We're dead already? Oh my god, good thing I saved it. Well, Jesus. I recently returned from patrol. The comrades of Lord Dunn. Or maybe I was supposed to die. High hall, approaching the quarters of Elton's sovereign lord. Word of the unforgivable is in the land. Forces without virtue, it is visible. Oh no, that's just a repeating the the intro movie. <laughs> so, yeah. That was not good. So apparently this is one of those games that does not play around at all. Okay. And let's see if we can uh, maybe continue. So what got us a war? Maybe I should just make a beeline for this building. Instead of yakking. I have some experience in these things, you know. Abandoned huts are not always as they seem. Yeah, I got a lot of experience with the abandoned huts. You know, I used to serve pizza here long ago. Uh, over there, for instance, where the floor look, looks a bit askew. That's a badly concealed door to a chamber beneath us. There must be a way to open it. Is it a puzzle? What is that thing? God, those dogs back. Oh, <laughs> oh God, I'm actually terrified. Hey, what is that? I don't know what that is. Looks like there's a parchment. A skeleton's parchment. Well, let's look at that. He spent a lot of time. I mean, there's some slow riders, but this guy really took his sweet time writing this. <laughs> Strad von Zorovich, master of Barovia. It is the heart of this dark. If the heart of this dark land has a name, it is Strad. My lord and my destroyer. As I die, let me write what I could never freely say: that the very air about us bears the stench of Strad's foul will. Let it be my epitaph that if I had the strength of youth, no assassin of the Baalverzi would more willingly devote himself to Strahd's destruction. With my last breath, I curse his name. Or with your last movement of your hand, I suppose. Um, what's that? Is that the badly concealed secret door? Badly concealed behind pixels. No, it's it's like a shelf. Is that the badly concealed <laughs> door? Oh my God! Where is this badly concealed door at? Is that? Is there a button I need to push? Oh, don't tell me I'm gonna have to look at the clue book already. There's something over there. Yeah, 
Now look. What is that? A stone. I think I hear those words. Oh, I think I... Look right there. Okay, how do I... How do I... How do I do to it? Um... Uh... God almighty. Is there a use button? Maybe I have to get like right on top of it. No. Okay, I'm gonna have to get some help, I'm afraid. I just don't know what to do. Big honking chair. Okay, let's see. Can I pause it? Uh, pause, pause. What the hell? Ah! Uh, that'll pause that, and let's look at the uh, clue book. Okay, yep, I did that, did that. Uh, synopsis. Um, what? I don't think this is going to be one of those, those cute glue books. <clears throat> I wonder, where, where am I at? It looks like I'm in this little house here. B. Okay, B. Where is B? Where is B? Oh my god. I can't even use the clue book. B, H, and P. Somewhere here they must tell you what that means. Oh, here we go. I marked a position where we entered this village woods with a P in the abandoned house which lay before us as position H. A careful search of the building revealed a trap door at location B. We opened it by means of a secret button inset on the south wall. Okay. So there is a secret button here. Badly concealed, eh? <laughs> okay. On the southern wall. Well, I, I thought... I Didn't I press that already? Oh, here we go. So we are inside... I wonder if I can rest yet. You know, Menzo Branson was kind of picky about where you could you could rest. Let's see, memorize. Uh, pray. <laughs> yes, pray. Okay, I think I've used up all these, right? Oh no, that doesn't did not automatically pick spells for me. Okay, let's do a bless. I don't know, do we need light? Invisibility to und probably means uh, to undead. I'll just go ahead and load up on Cure Light Wounds. I'm trying to remember if Hold Person, does that work on undead? I don't even remember. Do a draw strength. I guess I'll take a couple. I don't remember if they're working on undead or not, but might want to do a slow poison just in case we get ourselves poisoned. Um, I think I'll do a... Yeah, let's do that. Alright, cure disease, dispel magic, negative plane, protection probably, prayer, remove paralysis. Just, now the negative plane, I don't know if that's... Is that going to help us? Well, the <laughs> quite inspiring painting here in the background. <laughs> Dispel magic, cure disease. Well, they might. I mean, this is all potentially useful stuff. Okay, done. I don't know if our paladin. Does he have spells yet? Sometimes the paladins don't get. Don't get uh, spells right away. I don't think there's a way to. Yeah, he's got some spells. Or some skills anyway. Lay hands, turn undead. But maybe he doesn't have. Uh, 
You know, maybe he can't. Pray. Does he pray for his spells like Leonardo? No, I don't know. Is that Elmore? I think this is Larry Elmore painting here in the background. Really great, fabulous artist. Okay, let's save it. And let's see if we can rest. Do you want spellcasters to heal the party? Yes. Okay, apparently we successfully rested. Now I wonder if this game is supposed to have a vaguely like Lovecraft Cthulhu kind of feel to it. There's a door. How does one open doors? Uh, <laughs> spacebar? <laughs> Return? Uh, is there a use button? Open? Oh, maybe it's all secret buttons. There we go. Oh, what was that? I, you know, I, I, something came out of there. Oh my god, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay, there's a barrel. That I understand. Smash barrel. <laughs> oh, I can't smash the barrel. Oh, this game is toying with my emotions. Turn. If only I could look down. <laughs> chainmail. Oh, do I want to pick up the chainmail? No, let's leave the chainmail alone. Okay, he's already got shade mail. This guy's just got a st stupid blue robe. You know, I don't know if, you know, the uh, Menzo Branson game, there was no place you could sell anything. You were just stuck holding the, holding on to everything. Cleric Scroll of Ray's Dead. Well, that's, that'll uh, come in handy, I'm sure. A Baal Verge Dagger. Let's see, that does 3 to 6 damage, or 3 to 5 in the offhand, I guess. But my sword does 2 to 8 points of damage, so I think I'll just hold on. I don't know if that dagger has special properties or not. Pick up a potion of extra healing. Yeah, that'll probably be needed. All too soon. <laughs> Especially if I can't open up these barrels and crates, man, that's... You know, if I get a... Chris... Straka, is that his name? If I get him on the show, I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna have word about that barrel back there, those crates you can't open. You gotta be able to smash those things. Uh, what is that thing? One of those giant Halloween cauldrons what is this another potion of healing that one's a little bit oh it's different amounts of healing potion you know I see what he's talking about though and I remember in the Menzo Baranza uh, game or the manual <laughs> it kept talking about how in this game we you've got items on top of shelves and boxes and things they actually put that in the manual like it was a big deal <laughs> Uh, so I assume it's like this game, everything's just on the floor. And then they made that amazing innovation. Where you can actually have some some stuff, like sitting on top of a barrel. You know, it, it's stuff like that. You know, people that don't code, that don't know anything about game development. They're like, what's the big deal? You know, just... what's uh, Anybody could do that, but you actually... You know, I'm sure it was a bit tricky... You know, figuring out how to actually implement that. You know, because you're just working, I guess, with the like a library of sprites. And you probably have a different people to come in here and use an editor of some sort to lay out these levels. All right, I think I've found everything. You know, maybe it's like. 
you know, Menza Branson would show you little dots. Let's see, this is furniture, NPC, creature tree, the party, object. So I guess the objects are slightly different color. <laughs> Man, this is a gonna be tough to see. This music is creeping me out. That looks like a little fireplace. You know, this this little house here is probably like a safe zone. Place to come and rest. Okay, I think I've about got everything I can find in here. So let's go back up. We'll save it. And see if we can fight those wargs. Creepy. It looks like I should be able to put something in that plate. Okay, save, save. For the love of God, save. Uh, get some spells ready here. We could do bless. I don't think bless lasts very long, though. Draw strength probably lasts a while. Let's go ahead. Oh, he just casts it on himself, I guess. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, dogs. Okay, let's go fight the dogs. Oof. Whew, that was that was the first or this the, yeah the first well I guess you could call the assassin the first battle but you know I I need to rest again I really hit hard okay let's go back down if I can figure out how to go into the hole. <laughs> I guess there's just a spot you have to you have to sit on. Okay, rest. Yes, rested 12 hours. Well, at this rate, we'll be done with this little adventure in a hundred thousand years. That was quite the fight with those dogs, man. I need a full 12 hours. At least we don't have to deal with food. All right, where do you think we're supposed to go? Looks like there's some objects dead ahead of us. Let's check that out. Let's make sure we're going the right way. Yeah, headed right towards it. Looks like it's just a bunch of stupid rocks. Okay, whoa. And those, the bright ones are the objects. I think these are just furniture. Where do I go? Ooh, there's a bunch of stuff down there. Yep, looks like we're going to go south. I see another one of those damn... Is he trapped behind a tree? <laughs> yes! Advanced AI! I wish I could get him lined up. Oh! It's like trying to sneak off to the left. Man, alive! Look how much damage that thing did. Almost need to go back and rest again. I'm gonna try to just cast some spells. Man, can you imagine if they did start you off at level one? Yeah, th this is not even. That's just barely healing anything. Oh my god, that's lame. Again. I'm gonna cast every spell just for that one warg. Might have to use those healing potions already. Okay, what's that bring him to? Still got six hit points to heal. I think I will use a prayer next time we fight those dogs. 
How much does that actually heal? One! <laughs> Worthless! Okay. Yeah, if it's, just, if it's gonna heal that small an amount, you might as well just... Just use it for something else, that spell slot. I see something coming there. What is that? A goblin. A goblin. We spell our names with a Y. Thank you very much. You know, goblins are not known for their spelling ability. Neither is Dreamforge. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this is a Ravenloft thing. Okay, I am definitely going to have to go back and rest after that. find a way back into my bubble. Oh, no, run away from that warg. Get away from that warg. Whew, man, this is brutal. <laughs> brutal, I'm gonna do a second save here. Man. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Let's get rid of some of these those cure light wounds. Let's bump up another bless there. Magical stone? What is that? I don't even know what that spell is. I'll do a detect magic. That's usually pretty useful. Well, the whole person's not gonna work. You know, that probably would have worked on those goblins. Short for goblin Lynette. Okay, rest up. Oh, man, I'm just glad they gave me this little hidey hole to sleep in. I would not survive. I'm going to pause it here and go get some more coffee. And be right back. And we're back. Had to fill up the old Yeti mug. Mmm. Ah, this is not the kind of game you want to play <laughs> all by yourself in the dark. <laughs> when you're fighting Warg, they want to assimilate me. I think he's still sitting up there. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a bless. Cast spell on which character? You know, you both, both of you guys need it. <laughs> when I think about you, I bless myself. You remember that uh, Star Trek episode, the Next Generation episode, where Picard becomes uh, the cutest of Warg? Oh, there he is. Look at him. <laughs> you can't fit in here. They don't play around these. Oh, these words are almost as bad as my jokes. All right, let's see. We were headed, I think, south before we were so rudely mauled by wargs and globlinets. Okay. There's another one of those buggers. Little Chewbacca's. This one, what's the matter with him? What is going on with... You know, I think they're getting, like, hung up on the trees. <laughs> yeah, the path... Pathfinding is not going to be this game's strong suit. Okay. Uh, I saw another one of those bastards. He's hiding now. He's hiding in it. Does seen what happened to your brothers? Are you hearing that? What in the name of God? Oh, he's ugly. Like something you'd fight on Altered Beast. Come here, you. 
the tree he can attack me <laughs> it does sound like Chewbacca when they die oh I'm glad he's got a little better AC you know it's one of the things that always sucked about the original AD&D rules that you can't like the spells never get any better. Like Cure Light Wounds is just as good as it's ever going to be. Like those one to four hit points or whatever. I really like the newer systems where you can add your various modifiers onto it, and cast it at a higher level. And you know, we kind of, with time, we're able to come up with some more clever ways to, to do their spells. Okay, I think I still think we need to get down to that NPC get some help that's probably why it's so hard right now is all these we've only uh... damn they're gonna kill that cleric I got a whole ass run away run away god Leo what the hell man Rest up. Those goblins are chewing right into you. What is no joke? They didn't like me calling them goblin nets. Did not like that. Okay, resting up. Let's go back. <laughs> Am I ever gonna get oh that what the Oh he got in there? Oh God, I'm like, I gotta go back and rest again. I get this is crazy. Oh, look at this little goblin. Follow me all the way back to my base, huh? Yeah, they just about killed Matt. Thank you very little. Now, I guess this paladin, he's got his lay on hands. That would probably heal him up more better than this cure light wounds. That is just all but useless. It's like the over the counter stuff, you know. Should I go to the emergency room? No, I'll just have this CBD. It's just as good. <laughs> Homeopathy. Any word from my grandparents? There it is. Yeah, how you like that? Am I leveled up yet? <laughs> They're probably not even close. Yeah, look at that. 36,000 to the next level. He, we are going to be stuck. Hopefully I can at least find some better gear. Okay, let's try this again. Maybe if I just let him work the way around those trees. Come here. Why am I not fighting you? You gotta get close. Quit hitting my cleric! Damn. You think these things just constantly spawn, or can we actually clean them out. Oh, Goblin. I know it's hard, but I'm sure you can figure out how to get around that tree. <laughs> it's kind of cool that he's got a back. You know, he's got, I guess, three or four different versions of him. Of the sprite. Kind of mimic 3D. Okay, I'm going to save it here. If I could push on, I would gladly do that. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to handle many more of those. 
Oh, I'm way off too. He's like way to this. Here's another one. I see something over there. We got the goblin tribe, known for not being able to walk around a tree. It was a limitation. Most of out of my family, on the wrong side of a tree. Oh. Oh. Oh, am I dead? Am I dead or am I like one hit point? Zero. Let's see. Does zero hit points mean reload? Oh crap, he's a ball mine. Let's see if he's uh can take a potion. No, I think he's just flat out dead. Oh, it's gonna be one of those days. Alright. Fine, we'll trek back to the to the base and rest up. This is a both pretty heavily armored guys. I, you know, I'm trying to play this with like mages. That's probably a non-starter. Should I say a non-finisher? <laughs> okay. No wonder he looks pissed off. He's like, my cure light wounds only heals one point. Okay. Let's try that again. Now you're not gonna get. Some lessons learned from Menzo Barans and those this should be able to hold at least those uh, those damn goblins. Alright. <laughs> the whole video is gonna be me just trying to get down to that damn NPC. As sad as that is. It's a tough game. A poisonous vapor. We would never survive to the other side, nor even a moment more in that choking mist. Until we learn more of this land, it would be best to keep well away from its fog-bound borders. Yes. That has nothing to do with the <laughs> limitations. <laughs> like level design. Hold person. Did it not work? Oh, they, they keep trying to, like, go to the side, too. That's annoying. Crying out loud! That's one of those things. Oh, my God. This game, you know, it might be too much for yours, truly. I, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna uh, play something if I have to keep going back to this base literally every few seconds. <laughs> I will, uh... You know, I'll give it a little bit more. You know, my worry is those things are respawning every time I do this, too. You know, that could be the case. I could just be creating a never-ending supply of goblins. Okay. Let me just try to make a beeline for that. <laughs> Insane difficulty, but that's, you know, this that's the era. They didn't think anything about making a game where you had to just reload, 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 save, reload. Alright. Here he comes. Come here! God, is this guy wearing armor? Does he have armor? <laughs> yes. What is your problem? Jesus. All right, I probably shouldn't have blown through that potion. This is just getting ridiculous. Okay, maybe this will be a, a guy I can... What? What in... What is he doing? Uh, fellow... You've done well to keep your head on your shoulders in this company. Who might you be? Don't you recognize a proud merchant when you see one? Well, admit to being a, a merchant. merchant. A merchant second. I was doing some trading when they caught me on the road. Oh, I think the goblins ate my goods and may have been about to do the same to me. Well, don't stand there gawking. Cut me loose. As soon as I can figure out what kind of accent I've got, you can add me to the party. 
merchant, hey, eh? and then you'll understand I'm cutting you loose, but not for free. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, for free that is. But not free. What? It's a bad pun. I love it. <laughs> What's this? You say you're an adventurer? It's enough you're alive, eh? Can't you free yourself in time? By the gods, I do thank you. But as I said, these beasts have all I had. Including some of Barovia's... Close your legs. All I can offer is my help. At least if there's a profit coming. Brandy wine. But till then, my hands and heart are yours. Okay, that's good. I'll join you. I know that I'll not let us fall prey to goblins. I've learned their tricks. By the looks of you, you're not from Barovia. No, not even Kartakis. No matter. For me, it seems strangers are a good omen. I've always relied on the kindness of strangers. Uh, hang on, though, buddy. I see ya. <laughs> oh, that goblin back there. He's just dancing. He's... Oh, man. Boy, he looks all evil here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Have a robe. <laughs> oh, and a dagger. What is he? Chaotic good level 5 fighter. Okay, well that's bound to be useful. Let's see, how do I organize these guys? I know there's some way to reorder the party. I'm pretty sure that's on the... Pretty sure this is the front ranks and these are the back ranks. Probably doesn't matter at the moment. Let's Memorize options, maybe? <laughs> Palette intensity. Max! Step movement straight to the ring. Uh, how do I move a guy over? Can't click and drag. Not do anything? Um, Maybe it's not really essential, but there's got to be some way to move him to that slot. Yeah, we won't worry about it, because I, I think I see some some items here. Yeah, look, there's like a sword there. A two-handed sword. That's probably better than that. I don't think you're supposed to hold it that way. <laughs> There's a shield. Oh, it'll give you a two-handed sword, but a shield too. Give the shield to, to the cleric. Leather armor. <laughs> oh, God, that looks awful. <laughs> it's like something out of like a terrible '80s fantasy, low-budget fantasy film. Ator. There's another scroll of race. It really inspiring. My. Oh, what's this? chest. Okay, what's in the chest? Oh, a bunch of goodies. Okay. A chain quaff. A leather helm. Cure serious wounds. I'll just leave those potions in there. A couple of throwing knives. But, you know, I hate to say it, but even though I added a merchant to the party for some reason, Still don't think I'm gonna be able to sell anything. Okay, let's see. His AC is eight. Oh, that's garbage AC. That is all these guys have garbage AC. But at least there's more of us to hit, be hit. So the more of us there are to be hit, the less we'll get any one person will get hit. <laughs> I don't think we want that chest as a side item. Go away! Okay. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Alright. Come on. Kill a be killed here, people. Come on. Oh my god, just that one goblin brought me down. I <sighs> think I could rest here? That would be Fool hardy. Don't want to have to go all the way back to base. 
No, too many monsters. Okay. At least we got a change of music. Okay, rest up again. Maybe since the cleric has a shield Leo there. Got a little bit extra melee going here too. Okay, save. <laughs> Love of God, save. <laughs> now what? Okay, so we got that. Some objects there. It's probably just rocks. I don't see any more NPCs around. Oh, there's an NPC. Let's see if we can get this NPC. So it's a little bit to the south and then to the west. So I'm going to go around this building here. Okay, let's see where we are now. Overshot him. Northwest. And a little bit to the west. There we go. Now, who is this? <laughs> huh. Sir, you appear to have lost your way much as we have. Is there any assistance we might offer? This is how DMs imagine players talk. <laughs> Would you direct us to a town, some settlement where we might bargain for supplies or raise a tanker? T you know, they keep teasing me with this idea of being able to sell supplies. Please tell me there's a merchant in this game I can actually sell stuff to. Uh, please answer us this. Is the name Strahd familiar to you? Uh, we'll just try the first one. Lost? No, not I. He's lost. Gone forever now. I know that. In the forest beyond the woods. In the dark beyond the That's night. Like every conversation I've ever had in Home Depot. Forever. You and the other town folk go home now. We've done all we can. Staying here will only bring them out. More vile appetites watching us from beyond those trees. Somewhere in the dark. They must smell our blood by now. Sir, you appear to have lost your way. <laughs> so I guess you can't add him to the party is what you're getting at, from right? Where? Ah, you come from the mist. I've heard of such things. If either the like of that is upon us, I urge you, get away. The force will not be safe. The road lies a way off, but if you make haste, you may reach it alive. From there, you'll find your way to Barovia. Barovia. All I know of it is this. I found no sign of my son there. He is lost. In my hopes to find him lies dead as the corpse in that place. <laughs> I leave pieces of my hope behind with each cold step. The corpse of my hope lies unburied on the land. But you must go. You are not safe in these devil woods. These devil woods. My name is no mystery. Here you breathe it on the air. You fear it from every fire and hear it on the whispers of the night. Look to the peaks, the rocks, the streams. There is Strahd. Twas Lord Strahd freed the land from old Dorian, sometimes called Dorian it's the Strahd, Pilot. apparently. But that was long, long ago. Take care, for Strahd brooks no insult and applies justice with an iron hand. Ah, silly tree hugger. Join my party. I need to. I got a fourth slot there. Uh oh. Oh. I'm getting attacked by. Oh, this is the end. <laughs> Come on, die, you stupid war. Die! Better. 
horse dog thing. That's just a bunch of stupid rocks. And there's another one back there. Now, let's see. Yeah, let me try the, the lay on hands. Maybe that'll. I don't know how often I can use that. There, at least it healed him up. Okay, good. Let me grab this. Oh, this interface is ghastly bad. <laughs> oh, he keeps like turning off screen. And you gotta have that cursor lined up on him just right for it to work. Okay. That, what is this? What is that? There's its ointment. A shield. What is this? And the, ah! Am I not in range? What? <laughs> what? Uh. Oh, he went down quick. I'm trying to interrupt my some mace. Another scroll case. Flame blade, cure light wounds, detect magic. Let's see if I can... Okay, I'll close that. So he's got a two-handed sword that does ten points of damage. The mace almost does the same. Then I could use a shield. That might help. <laughs> I really need these guys to be fully armored. Go away. Yeah, my party's half dead already. I'll go ahead and kill this guy. Oh, oh! You know, I guess if you were using the ranged weapons, I don't know if it would let you kill a thing stuck behind a tree like this. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Now wait a minute, he can hit me, but I can't hit him, that ain't fair. Hours of game, hundreds of hours of gameplay enjoyment. Man. It's not getting any less annoying. up again and I think I'll peek at the clue book to see what we're supposed to be doing so we fought a bunch of those things have we gotten any closer to leveling now those things must be worth like 50 XP a pop yeah I can't be too mean I can't be too uh, mean to this game because I'm, I'm trying to get Chris Straka on the show. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a wonderful game. It's just uh, having a lot of fun with these wargs. Uh, going back to base is fun. Yeah, I don't see anything else here, do you? I mean, there's some objects. Those are probably just rocks. Uh... That's a pretty good grouping of stuff down there. Let's go down to the far southern tip, I think, and, and see if that's worth collecting. Damn it, there's another one. Oops. Nope. Make him stronger. Things are all over the place. Okay. Map, map, map. So I need to go to the south west. Check the map. 
map again. Oh, what's this creature? Uh oh, great. Come here. And over here. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna kill me. Does he got another lay on hands? Ooh, this is close. Now I covered up his thing so I can't see. Halfway. You got him about halfway. Did, they, did anybody play test this? <laughs> Gotta get like right up on top of him. Man, that's horrendously bad. You know, Men's of Rands, and they must have fixed that because I don't remember having to like be so careful where I clicked. Oh man. Oh, let's just use a potion. God's sake, I'm never getting out of here. I wonder what this ointment does. God, I don't want to waste it. Even closer, I still gotta go. Whoa. Looks like pretty much due west. Should be able to see what these. Ah. Yeah, let's do the old person. Yeah, I just don't think that's working. I don't these are considered monsters and can't hold them. I wish I could get him to quit going to the side. Ah, oh, he's almost dead. Just keep using the potions, God. Ah, even the potions barely heal. Uh, I could just get to whatever these things are. It better be something good. I think I see him over there. All right, what is this stuff? Oh, healing potions. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm going to have to use it right away, too. All right, what do we got here? Oh, it's war and goblins. Close enough to kiss you to kill you. Alright, got them to push the healing. <laughs> pouch! What's in the pouch? Ooh! A ring. A short sword. And lockpicks. Okay, so a decent haul. I think I got to detect magic, right? Yeah, let's do the detect magic. And let's see if any of that stuff is magical. Yeah, it looks like his sword is magical. Well, it's a magical ring. Let's put it on him. So that brings your AC down. Probably should give it to who's got the highest AC? Four. Yeah, I'll put it on my character. That'll balance them out. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like the short sword is magical. Oh, one to six. Two to seven. That mace is actually better than the short sword. Okay, unfortunately, I will have to make a beeline back to base. Rest up again. Hopefully, I can get there without any more warg attacks. What am I like four hours into this video? 
Uh, yes. Now, surely after all that combat, I'm yeah, about 13k. Let's do the math and figure out how much I'm getting for those combats. You know, it'll probably get easier once I get into like a proper dungeon. Because there'd be less room for them to maneuver around me. I'm not sure how long prayer and bless last. Probably not too long. But, you know, I'll just go ahead and use it. <laughs> okay. Oh, don't go to the side. Save. So it was thirteen something. So that's probably like fifty to a hundred XP a pot, maybe. Let's go ahead and check out the clue book again and see. Where am I supposed to be going? But where the war wolves and goblins in these woods? No kidding. Two storage rooms. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there's the guy looking for his son. Been there, done that. Got that stuff. To the west, we found Old Old Svalich Road. So I guess that's where we're trying to get to. Old Svalich Road South. Let's see if we can get there. So I am... Oh, turn the clue book off. <laughs> there we go. So I need to go west to go south. Yeah, see? Clearly, what that is indicating. So go west, where the skies are foggy. West. Can you get around the tree? Stuck on a tree. Digging this music though, it's it's cool. Okay, I think that's the way through. You thought the goblins were bad. Wait till you see what we got here. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I'm such an idiot! Oh my god! Oh, I just reloaded the damn game. Yeah, I could edit that bit out, but coulda. <laughs> At least it's well mowed the lawns. These goblins, I guess, in their off time, they mow the grass. That's probably what I should be doing. Oh, let's see. It's a little sign from the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, whoa. Cool. If you walk my land, then heed my laws. A warning to those who defy my will. Strad van Zerovich. Well, that's not creepy at all. You know, I... I had something similar posted to my high school. Principal thought it would, uh... <laughs> Wait, there's two of those? Watch rocks. It looks like there's... staff or something or a bucket. I can't get to it. Okay, what does that say? Okay, we're on the road. 
we want to go north or do we want to go south? Mr. Clue Book. We followed the road south, but this proved to be a mistake. Do we want to go south? Anyway. Brigands lay in wait to the north. So, <laughs> even the clue book is difficult to understand. So, does that. I can't tell if this is like in character. Like, we went south, but it was a waste of time. Or is that like literally don't go south, player? Uh, the brigands trap. Yeah, I guess they're just saying there's nothing down there. What is T? T, the brigands trap on the map. Okay. Camp. Position of the battle. Ooh, there's a bunch of good stuff in the camp. So where am I at? In four. Where we met Velika along the road. You look Velika? Oh, hell with it. Well, why don't we go south? Save. <laughs> Make sure you're saving and not loading. I guess that's supposed to be a bird. Uh-oh, I hear that chuckle. Checklies. That's supposed to be Strahd. Here comes somebody. A brigand. Come here, brigand. Brigandette. Well, so far, this is an easier place than that starting zone. I don't want to go in there. <laughs> Why not? I get it. I don't really want to leave the zone. Unless. B. That must be B. Um, B. B, 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 B. What's B? Uh, stupid clue book. Save. Uh, can always save it, go in there, and see. I think we just went back outside. Now I am thoroughly confused. Oh, I see what happened. There's those two entrances to the zone. All right. Okay, so let's go south a little bit more. Way to the north. Huh. Um, trying to finish up a little southern exploration here. It is doing a little bit of fog of war there. There's something. It's like brigands. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's like I'm chuckling. <laughs> yeah. Chick chickle. So you have a lady on the hands. Time to use it. Well, there's something here. No need to waste time on the gate. I once told Protocol of the Smith Forge at Port Collis, which with bars that thick. He and I lifted and hammered, burned our hands, and learned our lessons. And I tell you, I could lift a treasure vault easier than I could bend those bars. I say we go back. In other words, no point. Now let's take another gander. So we must be like down here somewhere, right? So yeah, we really do just want to go north. Okay then. Alright, I had all right, I had to skip a bit there because I had the clue book on screen the whole time, didn't realize it. I <laughs> figured you guys actually like to see the game. So uh, basically what happened in between, I fought some bandits, got through a bandit trap, talked to a bandit, spared his life, and he told me there's uh, more trouble up ahead. There's a camp up here somewhere with a stone with an arrow through it. And that basically brings us up to snuff. There was a pretty good line in the dialogue. It was, uh, wisdom comes quickly to the last man standing in a fight. So there we go. And I turned off the clue book on my video program, so it won't, <laughs> it won't have that problem again, because just for some reason, just cannot seem to remember. Turn the sucker off. And there we go. Go down. Really had time for your theme music to play. Now let's go. Why can't I click on this thing? Man, they really should not. Not their distance is is messed up for some reason. What does that say, old road? What is that down there? Let's see, map. Oh, there's our NPC. Maybe that's the Velika or Velika. Huh. <laughs> it's like a pirate. Ho, oh, fellow! Which way to the nearest town? You're the first traffic we've encountered that hasn't tried to attack us. Hmm. I trust you will return the favor. It is often said in this land that only a fool crosses a gypsy. And I am a fool with stunny blood. As to the nearest town, that would be to the north, the village of Barovia. This Barovia is it a Vistani? Is it a Vistani town? Vistani, thats the name of the uh, sort of traveling communities in, in this land. I was trying to remember the name. Uh, what are the king of this land? We've heard he's a tyrant named Strahd. I'm afraid you are misinformed. For one, Strahd is no king. Our lord. Count Strad Wanzarovich makes few laws, and his voice is rarely heard. He rules from the shadows. Even so, he is the lord, the land, and the law. A friend to the Vestani and a just ruler. If you heard otherwise, your ears know the voice of an evil man. Huh. Yeah, Baron von Strad. Good, good ruler. Ha, ah, no. Barovia is a place for Georgios, for those not lucky enough to be born Vestani. Boundless world is a gypsy's home. Ah, but the land is not as boundless as it was once. And in places, in the outer regions of Barovia, you will come upon a fog. Beware. It is a vapor. A poisonous mist that rots the organs. Only a Vistani potion can get you home. Okay, how do you get the potion? 15 coins and the potion is yours. Your eyes tell me you do not have such a sum. What do you want? I am soon to be in Barovia myself. You will find me at a tavern known as the Blood of the Vine. Later, you may have coin enough, and in 
good faith, I will reserve some of my potion for the honest fellow I meet upon the road. Okay. So we're done with him. Well, let me check again, because I think we're supposed to run into a... Uh... Oh, gosh. They're getting their full use out of that character model. <laughs> okay. Pause. I think that'll pause it. Now, yeah, let me check. And this time I got it turned off, so you can't see it, but I can. Okay, camp. B in four is in three is Vistani's position. Okay, so we just keep going north, I think. And that should be good. Let's see if I can rest here. Okay, so that's good. At least we can rest. Ours. Warg! <laughs> now we can rest again after this fight. <laughs> Who is that laughing? Oh, that's not nice. They're just stones over there. Uh oh, where are you? Thought I heard another one of those. Warg. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to where we need to go this way. Dancing. Dancing, Warg. Yeah, it just cuts off anyway. Let's just leave him at our backs, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, I could sympathize with them though, it's a pain in the butt trying to get through here. Okay, a seamless interface. <laughs> seamless. Is that the developers laughing at us? <laughs> Alright, this has to be the marker the brigand spoke of. Perhaps he lied after all. It points directly to the wall. Am I supposed to walk through solid objects now? The brigand's fate was too kind. You know what that means. Secret entrance. Probably that little... So what am I looking for? What is that? There we go. Oh boy, there's a bunch of them in there. Yeah, maybe I can cast a spell while they're trying to figure out how to get to us. Uh, what else do I have? Plus, maybe? Let's try to do a hold person. Alright, it worked that time. You too, bump bump. Hold me. I see some treasure over there. Let's go ahead and hold you. Darklings. Darkling. Is that a name or is that a type of brigand? Ooh. Get them all. Am I not dead? Why is he green? <laughs> Why is he. What is. Poisoned. Oh, I got something for that. Oh. Go back. Slow poison. I don't think that cures it though, right? It just... Oh boy. That's... Let's try that ointment. Maybe that's what the ointment does. Yeah. 
Well, good guess, huh? Alright. Save, for the love of God, save! Alright, what do we got here? Short sword. Let's go ahead and pick up everything and then we can see if any of it is magic. Adamantite chainmail. That sounds promising. Looks like an axe. A shield. A chest. Ooh, look in that chest. Oh, there's a sack in the chest. <laughs> Oil of fiery burning. That is the worst kind of burning, you know, a fiery one. Whew. Man, I get a bunch of these stupid throwing knives. Kind of clagging up the old inventory. I still have no idea if I'm actually going to ever be able to sell any of this stuff. I'm going to assume not. Just get rid of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put the quiver on. I think I... Yeah, there's a sack back there. What is this? Cloak? Mage scrolls, bless, neutralize poison. That would have been nice to have. Fortune has smiled on the quest. Here is the first scroll of the mage's spell composed upon it. After it describes it to a spell book, the power of its magic will be at our command. Yeah, that's... Fortune has smiled on us, because even though we don't have a mage in the party, it totally useless scroll that's what gets mad excited oh my god uh, okay let's see I don't suppose I leveled up nope <laughs> far from leveling <laughs> you know what we can do though let's do the detect magic and see if any of that stuff is magical Oh, uh, yeah. Got a blue robe that's magic. Got some magic potions, unfortunately. Looks like that's... Why does that say AC bonus is zero? Are helmets completely useless? Just for decoration? That dagger there is magical, but I have no idea what it does. Alright, two to seven... I'm just going to start getting rid of some of this stuff here. Uh, 1 to 8. 1 to 8, 2 to 7. That's 1 to 8. Yeah, I guess that's a little better than the mace. Um, uh, no magical shields. AC bonus 1. Plus 1. You know, the only thing, I, eventually I'm going to get a fourth character member character member? A fourth a party member. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Again, I just have to hope that I don't actually need this at some point. Oh, you wear the cloak instead of armor. That makes sense. Yeah, there we go. Just put that in the... Put some of this in these chests just in case I ever do. Get that other party member. They might be able to use this stuff. Oh, there's another broadsword. There we go. Better than the longs. Yeah, okay. Now this is magical. Short sword. I wonder if there's any way to tell what that kind of magic that has on it. So let's see. That does? Doesn't tell me. All we know is it's magical. I don't even see my Thacko on that score sheet anywhere. Slow poison. That kind of stinks. I, I don't... 
I have to look it up in the handy dandy clue book. That's a short sword plus one, apparently. Okay, that might... You know, plus one short sword... Probably better than a broadsword with no magic on it. I just... I think the plus one, is that damage and hit to hit? I couldn't even tell you. There's that dagger there, too. I don't think the cleric... Oh, the cleric can... You tell me the cleric can use a dagger? I didn't think clerics could use uh, edged weapons. That's a thing, right? Am I just making that up? Okay, I think we got everything. It's just the junk. Okay. Let's see if we could rest here. Alright. Well, you see, that whole person spell came in really handy, didn't it? You know, I don't like hearing something growling that I can't see. I hope I can figure out how to ease out of here. There we go. What does that do? You know, they nailed it with the sound effects on this game, though. Like, that's creepy. Hearing that. I'm not sure what else to do. I'll just keep going north. Hey, hey, who's this? Hello! <laughs> Oh, Peacock. What? Is this me saying this? Oh, Peacock. Or rather, since you are one of the light and graces of a female, Peahen. I was just thinking that. What are you doing in this dreadward land, my lady? Looking for friends, if I may call you that. And if I may, then know that I am looking for friends with coin. Do you have any? Traveling abroad has left my purse as light as a feather, and I am in search of generosity. If truly, desperately necessary. <laughs> I like her. How much do you need? There's a limit? Is there some level of wealth where we need no more? Well, to be honest, my first goal is to find a house that meets my needs. Perhaps in the village of Barovia. After that, I don't know. I've never been very good with plans. I know the feeling. What have you been up to? I, for one, believe a coxcomb such as yourself would have to play to the quest. A cox, coxcomb. Now, will you, I don't think I've ever been called a coxcomb. I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> a coxcomb. <laughs> oh, okay, so we've got a kind of like the jerk response. I wonder in the party. Blade, book, and sleight of hand. These tools of mine are I'm like a thief. Hand. Or maybe a bard. Yes. Definitely. Oh. What is that little book? She's a fighter, mage, and a thief. Holy cow. I'm everything. She's armed with a long sword. So can a mage... Oh boy, how do you do this? Oh my god, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I know there's some way to like learn a spell. Um, let me save it. Uh, exit out of that. Let's see, is it under memorized, maybe? Don't see it. Let's 
So how do you memorize or scribe a spell, I should say? Put it in the book. Oh, okay, so you just click on it and put it in the book. And there's... I don't know what kind of armor she's got now, but... Didn't I have some more spells? Let's see, that's empty. Ooh, <laughs> what am I doing? Get rid of that. Oh. Okay, so there's lock picks. Okay, nothing in there. But in there, where's those scrolls? No, that's not it, is it? Maybe in the scroll case? <laughs> no, all of those are clerics. Okay, am I losing my mind here? You know, I'll give her that dagger. I know I've got some Mage scrolls here. Yeah, they're there. Okay. Boom. Boom. Fireball. Flame arrow. Shield back. For the helmet. Robe. You know, leather armor would probably be better than that. Let's see, she's got an AC of 6 with that on. AC of 4 with that on, so yeah, we'll stick to the cloak. <laughs> Somehow a cloak is better than robes. Okay, now we need to look at her spell book. Alright, Malika. Magic missile, yes. I don't know how long shield lasts. I guess we'll grab it. Improved Identify, or Ice Knife, or Agonizer's, Agonizer, Agonatzer's Scorcher. I'll pick up that Identify, too. That's pretty handy. Let's see. Flame Arrow, Slow, or Fireball. Oh, I guess I'm not high enough level for that yet. Okay, let's just... Yeah, it's the hell with Shield. Let's just do two Magic Missiles. Improved identify. Looks pretty good. Let's see if we can. S Where is that thing coming from? Well, let me rest. You know, I could probably uh, identify that spell now. I mean, identify that dagger. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> okay, yeah, click that. There. Boom. Oh, so you don't do it on an item? Wow, that's a dagger plus two. Now, what else do I have? She only gets to identify one thing? Cloak plus two. Oh, I guess it only works, you know, on one item, I guess. Wait a minute, that ain't right. No, that was, uh... One of those broadswords was magical. Which one was... Okay. <laughs> so, okay. You do magic detection. Okay, yeah, look, it's blue. What? Uh... Yeah, all this stuff is magical. So why is she not identifying it? 
You know, just to prove a point, let's rest here. Cast it again. Okay, open up your inventory. Oh, maybe she's not high enough level to identify that for whatever reason. Okay, so we got a longsword plus plus one, <laughs> a broadsword plus one, a short sword plus one. You know, I wonder if I could do that. Huh. Okay, let's. It's just a regular broadsword, so let's toss that. Okay. What the hell was I doing? Trying to go north. Head around the rocks. Okay, there's something there. Village of Barovia. By the gods, this cannot be Lord Delt's beloved land. There in the distance, mountains the like of which I have never seen. Before we wander aimlessly through a town we do not know, it might be best to find us first citizen, a mayor, burgomaster, or such. Somewhere on the edge of town, I guess, we should search for a large prominent building, perhaps surrounded by a stone barrier or gate. So it is that power and wealth often display themselves. So here we are in town. We made it. <laughs> I do hear a chuckle. The life is all gone, but gone from this village. Never have I seen the like but once in a town where two armies converged for their final battle. There I saw desolation akin to this. True, the buildings here have not been burned as those were, but the feel is the same. Here's the welcoming committee. I guess. Tough fight here. Yeah, this is a very crappy town. Jesus Christ, get the hell ah! Oh, please don't tell me he died. Oh. Uh, yeah, you know, I think I've about seen enough in this game. <laughs> uh, Village of Barovia is probably a decent stopping point. You know, I gotta say, this, this game has definitely got the creep factor going for it. Hard as hell, though. You gotta have a lot of patience and just be constantly saving, reloading. Just, you know, random crap and your character's dead. You know, I'm pretty sure if I tried to raise the dead, he would be have like permanent constitution damage or some crap. Uh, the story is is kind of interesting. You know, you find trying to figure out where you are, what's this place. It's kind of like discovering what Ravenloft is all about as you play. And of course, trying to learn more about Baron Strahd and I guess how to uh, kill him and get the hell out of here. So it's got all that going for it. <clears throat> Uh, the interface, I mean, it's basically the same as uh, Menzo Baranzin, so all the problems with that are here. But for some reason, I, I felt like, I don't know if I'm just more used to the interface, but it was a little bit easier to uh, move around. Actually, that's pretty. Uh, you know, than I had with that game. I didn't feel the need to keep turning, uh, switching back and forth from, like, the arrow keys to the uh, grid-based movement or anything like that. Um... You know, just in terms of the fun factor, I'm going to say it's just a little too tedious to navigate around like trees and stones. and uh, Just the fact you can die so quickly and there's really nothing you can do but reload. I mean, whoa, don't do that. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, it's just, you know, all the games from the era basically are like that. They didn't think you'd have any problem just constantly saving and reloading that was oh there's a bat back there Those are... 
I think my biggest problem with this game is when you're, you're fighting and they keep like shifting to the side, like to the left and right, and then you have to like, you have to be right on top of them in order to hit them. And that's just not all that fun. You know, you can call it challenge if you want, or skill. <laughs> just not, you know what, let's at least find the Burgomaster. I'll try to hold in. I'll try to hold on until we find the Burgomaster, and then we'll uh, call it. You see, that's how it gets its fangs into you. You're always like, ah, oh, just a little bit more. There's an NPC. Let's see if we can get to that NPC. Maybe. I thought those were just villagers. <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to be attacked. Away. Yeah, no, it's not what I wanted to do. You see, it's they're attacking you from all sides, but it's it's tough to know where they're. See that crap? <laughs> like, why can't I attack him? You're right on top of him. And as always, they don't seem to have that problem. How is he? Why? They, ah! <laughs> you know, the worst part of that is the interface is it's, it's clunky enough, and it's like the your enemy the enemies are almost intentionally trying to. Uh, it's almost like they're intentionally trying to take advantage of that by going off to the side and getting just like out of range. Which wouldn't be so bad if they could hit you, but they're still like wailing on. Is that even the... is that the... Huh? Who is this? In this foreboding place, I'm not surprised when a young girl won't speak to a stranger. It's unlikely she could offer information of use in any case. The wisdom of a town does not lie in the heads of its young. Okay... <laughs> Don't talk to the children! They don't know nothing. I think this is Goonies. So she's just a useless NPC. Where's the Burgomaster? It says there's a door there. Oh, you can actually go inside the houses in this game. There. The cat. Well, you can go in here, but I don't know why you'd want to. Is, can I at least rest in here? You can at least rest in there. Okay. Twelve hours. What do you think the Burgo Master's place is? Place of opulence. There's another NPC. Let's see if we can talk to him. Not the friendly sort, not him. No, wouldn't spare a moment to speak with a stranger. What is it that has robbed these people of your common curse? Indeed. Um, yeah, maybe that place to the south might be. Is this considered opulent? Madam, if you don't mind my saying so, you have an air about you, almost of royalty. <laughs> Are you in hiding? You are mistaken. My blood is the full blood of this land. No better than any other maidens in Arabia. And I hide from no one. In truth, if you perceive some special quality in me, might I impose upon you? Might I join your company? Oh, an NPC. <laughs> I am a free woman. Unmarried and with none to tend to. All right. All that, you'll take me as your equal or not at all. The tedium here is not so great, I'll trade it to become a serving maid to an outward party. I beg your pardon, old one, should you find my language unmaidenly. Old oh. But now that we understand one another, I would be glad to accompany you. Uh, 
Uh, you need to drop one of your party members. Well, uh, gotta drop myself. <laughs> the character stinks. <laughs> oh, I hate to lose this. Well, if you're taking one another hand, I see an opportunity for a nap and a warm meal. All this chasing. Of okay, so we can uh, swap her out for. What is she? A fighter. Another fighter, man. And yet, in a stupid robe. Oh, goodness. Well, at least this guy left his gear behind. I think the other guy was like a level 7 fighter. I think that's just a regular sword. Let's do a quick detect magic just to see if she has a... A... Uh, No, just a crummy old sword. So we lost our like level seven fighter and got a level four fighter. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Where is this Burgomaster? Pretty big town. Well, you know, I'm one that's not opposed to looking at the clue book when we need some help. Uh, Virgo Master's Mansion BM. I know you can't see this. Okay, it's to the northwestern corner. Northwestern. Brigand or NPC? Here there are no bells, no cries in the marketplace, no vendors hawking their wares. Barovia, yeah, no vendors hawking their wares. Almost because the developers didn't want to bother implementing a merchant screen. I am afraid the only voice we'll hear is a cry of terror. Ah! <laughs> At least there's no little pebbles in the street. What's that? Am I going the right way? Yeah. Okay, let's talk to the Burgo Master. And we will conclude our adventures in Ravenloft. This place sticks out like a gold ring in a pig's nose. What gives such a man the right to flaunt finery in a poor town? Uh, he's no doubt stolen the townsfolk blind by inflating their taxes. This game got political all of a sudden. <laughs> You'd think the lord of this place would be outraged. Oh, I guess this is the lord of the place. Automatically opening doors. I take this guy's armor. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to be looting this place. I just want to find the Burgo Master. I like a cheese Burgo. I mean, you can tell that's a table and chairs. <laughs> it's nice he just lets you wander all around his house. Must be like a throne room in here somewhere. Here we go. I think this is... Oh, Christ. <laughs> I can't even find the Burgomaster in the house. V. Yeah, I found that. V. Uh, where is the... Where is the... Damn... 
Virgo Master. N5. Okay, N5. So it's like in the northeastern corner. It is kind of weird, though. I just keep thinking how this is... Even though they made Benzo Baranzan after this game, this one actually has... It feels It's easier to move around. Granted, the trees and the, and the rocks are, 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 are a mess, but... Like, just ordinary movement is smooth. Okay, I think I need to go on that all the way here. Is it a door? Is it a core? Welcome to the sitting room. Clearly, that's not the right way. Just follow your nose to the Burgo Master. This looks like where the Burgo Master would be. It would seem we found the home of a man who can afford to be unstingingly and generous to himself. This demonstration convinces me of one thing. When I am ready to change careers, does a Burgo Master I shall become? Yes! Yes, I want. That's a good job, Burgo Master. You can be the Burgo Master, and I think that's the Burgo Master himself. Your Excellency, Your Honor, um, please forgive me. I'm not schooled in how to address a Burgo Master. How do you? We Burgomasters are called by our title. I expect you will make my home yours while you are here. In the name of Lord Strahd, whose humble servant I am, please relax. Enjoy. I see another enjoys your hospitality. And do I? An elf striking mean man, mean and grace. Maybe we could verse with her. <laughs> Virgo Master, we've heard so much of account, account Strahd Van Zurevich. In some lands, weeks might pass before a traveler learns the ruler's name, but not here. Who is this man? Ah, I was coming to that. You see, your interest in the Great One is matched by his interest in you. As Virgo Master, I have been instructed to present you with a letter of invitation from Strahd himself. It is a great honor. Wait, Strahd is the bad guy in this game, right? I see another enjoys your company. Was your elven? Why are we so curious about this guest? At the risk of being rude, I say the dignity of my office would suffer were I to answer so many questions. The honor of Strahd's enchanting offer extends to you alone. My advice is not to refuse. And if my words do not impress you, if I cannot persuade you, he will compel Wait, we get to meet you. Count Von Strahd? His carriage awaits even now. Please, allow me to take you there. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Take us to Strahd's carriage. Ah, oh, cool. As promised, the Borgo Master directs you to Strahd's carriage. While it is a beautifully appointed vehicle, you cannot help but notice there is no driver. It's a Tesla. The steeds flat and patient. They appear intelligent, even anxious to fulfill their assigned duty. Self-driving vehicle. Autonomous. Whoa, man. The carriage comes about the end of the terrain. You gain your first glimpse of Castle Raven. 1993, baby. A sudden dread fills you as the carriage at last approaches the gates of the castle. Man, I'm glad I held in there for a few more minutes. Jesus, I'd have missed all this. Whoa. Everything will be fine. We're guests after all. Strange that I should say such a thing. If there's in this air something which brings sweat to the palms. My breath grows short and my heart pounds. Well, as if for no reason my muscles tense for a fight. 
Long-winded, isn't he? What's with this letter? Gentle travelers, I pray you accede to my humble wish and meet with me tonight in Castle Ravenloft. Oh, so we're in Castle Ravenloft. I feel a friendly interview to be in order. Okay, let's just play on a little bit. I want to see if we can actually meet him. Or if this is all just an elaborate ruse. This is cool. Is that where I need to go? Where are you? What? Okay. The door It's Bella Lugosi. I heard you were dead. dimensional gateways which made <laughs> philosophers speak. One was a subtle Adventure is a luxury I can ill afford. However, as I see you are capable, and as I trust, never betray the post, the key shall be yours for a time. Go as my agent and search out this gateway beneath the Ibis. Cool. Good enough talk. Please, I have invited you here to join in a pleasant repast. After we finish the best food and brandy wine Barovia has to offer, I will have my carriage return you to town. The encounter ends as pleasantly as it began. If the hearts bowed farewell and wishes for a safe journey from Strahd von Zarovich. Has the Lord of Ravenloft proven himself a gentleman? As the carriage clatters back across the bridge, hmm. it is time to reflect on this first encounter with Strahd. So yeah, this is a... Uh... The game's really starting to come together at this point, I feel like. I love the, uh, you know, the sort, of, sort of ambiguity around Straw. Like, is he the bad guy? Should we try to kill him? Should we do these quests for him? Yeah, so it really picked up there. Kind of a bumpy start. You know, unfortunately, it's like now I'm kind of at the end of the video, which is kind of a shame because I feel like this is the point where the game would really <laughs> start to get good. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's always good to end on a high note, I think. Uh, so let me just, uh, you know, to wrap up here, uh, again, you know, it's not obviously not going to be as smooth as a game from, you know, modern times. Um, you know, just judging it by other games of its era, I think it holds up pretty well. I actually think it's, you know, easier to move around than the uh, uh, Menzo Baranzum was. I, I like that. And, you, you know, you could always switch to this stepping mode, too, if you wanted to... You know, maybe that would solve a lot of the problems if we just switched to this mode. 
Yeah, so there you go. So even like that annoyance is when the monster's moving. Uh, it looks like when the monsters are moving to the left and right and getting out of range, if you activate step mode, that problem seems to go away. Let's just see if we can verify that. Whoa, there's a bunch of them here. <laughs> what? Cool to say, this is not a happy place, jovial place to be. Okay, yeah, time for just a random <laughs> statement. Oh! Okay, definitely not easier in that turn <laughs> based mode. Oh, they've already killed my dude anyway. Uh, what? Man, that's just a disaster. I mean, that should have never left the. It should have never left the cutting room, or the. I should have never released it in combat that hard. But I'm sorry, it's just way too hard to like, uh, you know, click on the enemy and connect. And he's already dead. So I have to reload like all that. I should did I, did I save it before the? Where did I save it? This is after we talk to him, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, definitely one of those old school games where you're just constantly saving. But, you know, some people actually enjoy that. You know, it's, it's not too... The nice thing about an older game like this is, you know, you can load and save without having to wait forever for the screens to pop up and, you know, get back into it. Uh, so you just get in the habit of constantly saving and loading. Uh, is it a game worth playing? I think this is... You know, to me, this is a little bit snappier, I think, than uh, even with the problems we talked about. I think this holds up a little better than Menzo Baranza, just because you get the... Uh, you know, I think Strahd and all that will be fun to learn more about him. and The, the atmosphere is it's definitely better. You know, that Menzo Baranza game, everything just seems so muddy. Although, that game did have Drizzit. This game just has... He's dead again. <laughs> it's just hopeless. All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ravenloft, hard game. Be uh, prepared to be uh, very patient with this. It's going to take you a long time. Apparently, you know, hours and hours just to hit the next level. That's what it's got. <laughs> you definitely would want to max out everything. Uh, but I think... Oh, don't save it. Do not save it. Oh. You know, let's just see what happens if I try the... These raise the dead. See how big of a penalty it puts on him. So he's back, but does he, does he lose stats permanently? What is that? Yeah, I guess he... I don't know if that means permanent or not, but he's lost a point of constitution. It's, it's what I recall what happens when you raise the dead. <laughs> so basically it's this incredibly crappy thing. I never understood why they did this, but in these, these old school uh, AD&D games, if you raise the dead, you come back with like a permanent loss to your constitution, so you're basically easier to kill <laughs> than you were before. So I guess, you know, if you just absolutely don't want to reload uh, that's an option, but otherwise you would just want to reload, obviously, and not lose that point of constitution permanently. Uh, but anyways, I was saying, I think this game would be worth the uh, the help of getting up to you know, a couple more levels so you can really see what it has to offer. You know, I kind of took a peek through the rest of the clue book, and it's uh, absolutely huge. Let me exit out of this so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, quit that. Bring the clue book back. Yeah, so you can see here, we've just barely scratched the surface of this game. I mean, it, <laughs> tombs, and, uh, uh, the castles. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty long, yeah, these greater catacombs. But you just look at that alone. I mean, huge, really good old school dungeon crawls. I think it's just kind of hampered by that really sort of rough 
rough start. I know some of you guys told me about this. You know, you're like, if you play Ravenloft, be aware that the opening, you know, it's really tough to really get get it, uh, <laughs> you know, to get anywhere in it. But is it worth uh, ten bucks? I mean, really five bucks because you get the sequel too. Absolutely. And you should play this just to see what was going on back in. This is '94 there, uh, back in '94 in the world of of games. But you know, truth be told, you know, I'll just be honest with you. At this, this is the point really. You know, SSI had been doing those. Uh, they sort of hit their peak, I think, with the gold box games, at least in terms of uh, role playing, uh, pool radiance. I think they did. I don't remember when Pools of Darkness came out, but they had all those great gold box games, and then they had Westwood come in with the black box games, uh, Eye of the Beholder series, basically, and those were fabulous. Um, and all these other games are kind of like, eh, you know, they're okay. <laughs> you know, compared to mo most modern games, they're incredible. Uh, but, you know, they just don't hold up as well, you know, some of those those older ones. And I think Ravenloft, and Menzo Branson, and uh, what's the other one uh, from this era? It's like uh, blanking on the name. It's like this sort of post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> uh, you know, those just don't seem to quite have as much going for them. So I always just kind of put these in the... You know, if, if somebody comes to me and they're like, hey, man, I want to get into, like, old school role-playing games, so where do I start? I would never say start with Ravenloft <laughs> or start with Menzo Baranzen. Uh, or something like that, I'd always say, you know, you probably want to start with uh, the Gold Box series or, or Eye of the Beholder if you want to go a little further back. Uh, Dungeon Master, and of course, uh, you know, the classic Ultima games. Uh, those hold up pretty well. Wizardry holds up pretty well. Uh, these games, uh, you know, I hate to say it, I think they're kind of like <laughs> products of their time. And You know, if you didn't grow up playing it, I don't know. It, you know what it really needs... And I'm really kind of disappointed there hasn't been more attention on Ravenloft. Uh, you know, the, the board game, or the tabletop game, you know, there's been plenty, there's lots of new stuff out there. But I haven't heard anything, and I could be wrong, or maybe I just personally haven't heard anything, but I haven't heard about anybody that's uh, bringing back this Ravenloft uh, series. Because I always felt like it, you know, after playing this, <laughs> You know, I feel like there's some room there for somebody to really come along and modernize this because it's a great setting, and this uh, the characters are great. You know, Strahd, classic, and apparently the novels are really good. I haven't read those yet. They're on the list. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'd love to hear your your take on this game. What do you think about Ravenloft? Yeah. What do you think about this game and the sequel, Stone Prophet? You know, are they worth picking up? Are they worth playing? Uh, let me know what you think, but we'll stop it here, and see you next time. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let me know what you want to see in uh, future episodes. Like I said, I'm trying to get uh, the developer of this game on, but uh, if you've got other leads, you know, people you want me to talk to or games you want me to cover, just sound off there in the comments and I'll be sure to look at those. And uh, we'll definitely put that on the queue. Uh, I know we've got lots of uh, great games out there. We have yet to cover both old and new. Uh, so just let me know what you want to see and I will definitely consider it. And as always, I want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. You are awesome. You are keeping this show on the YouTubes all these years. Could not, would not do it without you. You know, if you like Matt Chat, if you like these episodes, if you sat through, you know, the two hours here of Ravenloft or whatever it ends up being, <laughs> you know, for some reason you're not paying, I mean, come on. You know, all I ask is a buck a show. Uh, just head over there in the link uh, below the video. You can find the link to the Patreon site. Sign up, you know, it's a dollar, or you can just say, I'll just give the guy 20 bucks, <laughs> you know, and, and consider that like two or three years payment, whatever. Uh, I just appreciate whatever you do for the show. It's important to me. And I really, really, honestly, sincerely appreciate your help in making the show. So uh, thank you once again uh, for those who've already done their part. And if you're like, eh, you know, just eh, <laughs> go on over that edge and uh, sign up. All right, what about that news? from the Mad King.
got some pretty cool stuff here. Uh, first up is a rock, paper, scissors review, sort of mini review uh, by Imogen Black Helling. And she's talking about RPG, uh, <laughs> or she's talking about the RPG, Celasta Crown of the Magister. Now that game is out of early access now. It's uh, fully released and some players are already saying it is better than Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to admit, I've yet to play. I'm, I've yet to play Baldur's Gate Three. I just, I got so many uh, apprehensions around that. I don't even want to uh, to play that right now. Yeah. You know, when the time is right, I will, uh, <laughs> you know, give that a go. Uh, but for now, there is the Celasta game. Uh, some people have compared it to like watching a group of dorky pals dressed up to LARP in the nearby woods. Now, I don't know what kind of pals who would dress up to LARP in the nearby woods who wouldn't be considered dorky, <laughs> as if that's a problem. Uh, but anyway, that's a pretty good review, I think. Uh, apparently the voice acting is kind of iffy, but, you know, who gives a damn about that? Uh, anyway, go check out the review, check out the game. You know, and by the way, if it's something you want me to cover on Match Chat, uh, let me know. I've, I would definitely consider that. Maybe even get some of the, uh, uh, the team on here to talk to us. All right, next up, we've got a first-person shooter game called Graven. And apparently, according to Screen Rant, it is, um, this is Alex Santamaria, a retro-style FPS that appeals to old-school RPG fans. So, you know, a lot of uh, sort of classic Doom fans are into this game already, but apparently there's some stuff in there for RPG fans as well. Uh, this review says it's something like Thief, an ongoing storytelling that's immediately gripping. 3D Realms and developer Slipgate Ironworks have created a fantastical first-person experience that looks only to get better as it emerges from early access. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to go definitely check this out, Graven. You know, I mentioned this on Twitter and it's already got quite of a, a flutter <laughs> of a commentary around that. So it must be something pretty cool. Uh, I've yet to try it, but we'll see. Uh, and then last up, uh, this is a game called The War of the Solstice. And what they've done here, this is uh, Indie Retro News, uh, that old game Lords of Midnight, they've taken that and given it a, a 3D remake. And so this is, uh, let's see, Frozen Empire, uh, a, re a 3D remake of the Lords of Midnight by Mike Singleton. Man, it would be good to have. Is he still around? <laughs> I don't even know if he's still uh, alive. Uh, it'd be great to uh, get him on the show, though, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> that was a game. The original uh, Lords of Midnight came out in 1984 for the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, and Amstrad CPC. So they've tried to take, this team has tried to take those default mechanics, stay true to those, while of course adding up, adding in all this uh, 3D conversion stuff, and an immersive soundtrack. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch of other stuff here too, let's see. Uh, Options for a custom rule set with increased levels of difficulty, a community leaderboard, and much more. Uh, so definitely go check that out, especially if you are a fan, of course, of the Lords of Midnight game from 1984. If you do check it out, let me know what you think. All right, so, uh, you know, I've got an ale, uh, a potential L of, the, L of the week that I've been, you know, I've brewed it, I put it on the, in the keg to, uh, to carbonate. Uh, unfortunately, it's taking a long time to uh, to fizz up. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably at least another day, maybe two, <laughs> maybe three days away uh, from really being ready. And again, it's just not something you can rush. Uh, you know, I like to take my time with these. So uh, in lieu of that, I have uh, something that looked kind of interesting uh, from the store. <laughs> a uh, new Belgium 19... Yeah, kind of... It's quite the can. Uh, I'll see if I can get a close-up of this can here for you. Maybe find a an image online someplace so you can admire this. But, you know, it's, it's a really fun image. It's 1985 IPA uh, from New Belgium uh, in their Voodoo Ranger series. It just looked like a beer that was just made for me, you know. Uh, 1985. <laughs> what a great year. Let's see, it's an India Pale Ale with mango flavor and spice. So I have to admit, I've gotten a bit uh, spoiled you know, brewing my own stuff and, and kegging it up and all that. So it's been a while uh, since I've... Uh, you know, went to the store-bought ale uh, to try those out. So needless to say, there was a huge selection. Uh, let's see, 6.7% alcohol by volume. A lot, a lot of uh, options there looked interesting. 
Uh, but I thought this one would be uh, just perfect for this. But anyway, let's get this open and see what it's all about. Now what I'll do here, I'll pour some of this in a mug so you can get a look at the, uh, the color. Now it looks very, very pale. I don't know how well you can see this, but it's very lightly colored. It looks almost like a white ale. Ah, it smells kind of like more of a, of a wheat ale or a Belgian than an IPA. I guess that's the mango uh, they were talking about. And I'm always a little bit cautious with the fruits. You know, sometimes it's just a, a flavor profile from the hops. Uh, sometimes they actually do add in like purees and, you know, fruit juices. I don't know about this one. It just says mango flavor <laughs> and spice. So, you know, I guess we'll just have to taste it and see what we think. You know, if it tastes good, if you like the taste, who really cares, right? You don't necessarily have to be a purist. But I'll tell you one thing, guys. If you get into brewing your own beer, uh, the thing that just blows you away are the hops. I mean, there's so many different kinds of hops, and you just open up the, the package, and it's just <laughs> kind, of, it's kind of incredible. Uh, you know, even if you don't like beer, I think you like just playing around with the hops and smelling them and you know, some people make tea uh, with those. There's other things you can use them for besides beer, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's especially exciting uh, if you're brewing beer. But anyway, uh, yeah, you definitely smell, uh, I guess, the mango. Or not, I don't know too much about mangoes. It smells kind of a, really more like a, you know, if I didn't know what this was, I would say it's probably a Belgian ale. Uh, kind of get kind of a pineapple uh, aroma from this. No sort of alcohol fumes, uh, nothing unpleasant here. It's just uh, kind of that light citrusy uh, scent to it. Uh, and again, very light color. It's probably going to be pretty good. Uh, let's give it a taste. Now this one is it's definitely a bit on the light side in terms of flavor, I would say. <laughs> uh, it's kind of creamy. Uh, you taste a little bit I'd probably say this is more about the uh, the aroma than the taste. Let me try it again. Yeah, with this, it's not very bitter. You know, I don't even know how they can call this an IPA. <laughs> it's really not hoppy at all. Uh, really, what I get instead is that that's I guess that mango flavor. Well, they must have used some uh, wheat uh, wheat grains to to brew this with uh, because it tastes very much like a wheat ale. You know, it says. You know, you could be forgiven for thinking this was Blue Moon. You know, if I just gave this to you and didn't tell you what it was. <laughs> if I gave it to you and said, this is a Blue Moon, uh, you'd probably think I was uh, telling the truth, even though this apparently is an uh, IPA. Uh, I'll give it one more taste here. Yeah, so what you got there, you know, it's not bad at all. It's a very light tasting, uh, sort of vaguely Belgian-y, uh, I guess a mango, again, it tastes more like a pineapple to me, uh, flavored beer. I'm not sure what it's got to do with 1985, other than just the, uh, <laughs> the design of the can, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird how it smells different in the glass than it does in the, in the drinking horn. You know, I wonder, if, does the drinking horn, like, affect the taste and the aroma somehow? <laughs> like, all these years I've been prejudic prejudicing my reviews. <laughs> I'll just taste this just to be sure. You know, as weird as I think there is a difference. <laughs> yeah, it actually tastes different coming out of this glass than it does out of that uh, drinking horn. Uh, that is really kind of freaky. <laughs> I don't, don't know what's going on. I'll try it one more time. Maybe I'll have to start doing two different reviews, like one in the glass, one in the... Uh, one in the horn, uh, but for whatever reason, in the glass, it tastes a little hoppier. Uh, it's a little bit more bitter. You know, it's, it tastes a little bit more like what I would call an IPA. Still very light, uh, but, you know, I think I like it out of the glass. <laughs> you know, sorry, drinking horn, <laughs> uh, but I think I like it out of the glass a little better than out of the horn. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, anyway, uh, what would I give this? Uh, probably somewhere between two and three out of five stars, you know. You know, frankly, I've had better IPAs, and if I was going for a wheat or a Belgian, I'd just go for a wheat or a Belgian. I mean, 
or white ale. You know, you know, a lot of great selections there. I'm not quite sure why you would choose this over one of those. Uh, that said, though, it's not bad, and it is a fun uh, can design, so you want to give them a, a few points anyway <laughs> uh, for presentation. Uh, so yeah, we'll go, uh, you know, 2.5 out of 5 stars. Let's, let's call it there. All right, let's wrap it up. And I was looking up for quotes about vampires, and I got all into Bram Stoker, and just all over the place. Uh, but I finally settled on one from Anne Rice. You know, she wrote a few books about vampires you may have heard of. Um, but her quote, I don't know where this is from, but it sounds exactly like she's talking about a role-playing game. Maybe even Strahd's possession. It goes something like this. Whatever will happen will happen, but choose your companions with care. Choose them because you like to look at them, and you like the sound of their voices, and they have profound secrets in them that you wish to know. In other words, choose them because you love them. Otherwise, you will not be able to bear their company for very long. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like she's talking about something like Baldur's Gate, uh, you know, or any role-playing game with NPCs in there? Uh, it's just kind of weird. It seemed, you know, perfectly suited for this episode. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and see you next time. Because you spend most of your time in a missionary position, doesn't make you a missionary.